Ooh, this one is really heavy. Hmm. Interesting one. It's a time for package from China. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in a new package from China, we're going to take a close look at the Retro Pixel Game Boy. Yeah, well, I almost want to say Pi. It says Pi, but it is not actually a Pi. That is the interesting thing. So it came from RetroPixelGaming.com or yeah, this thing has been in storage for a very long time. And I must say that I was let's say having a double feeling about it, simply because it's more of the same, but there are some interesting aspects to it that I just wanted to show you. So and that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so the retro pixel, the box already like spoils it a little bit, it's like a spoiler alert, because yep, it's another Game Boy. Here on the channel, I've reviewed a couple of these Game Boy Pies, I think maybe five or more, but this thing is very interesting. And the reason why, first of all, this thing is quite heavy. It feels very nice. And I mean, like when it comes to the weight, it looks nice when a beautiful display and it has a lot of great features. One of them is this thing is open source Android and it is something new. Like we have seen like when Raspberry Pi in it, we'll talk about it later on in this video too. But when it comes to this, it has Android and you can just mess around with it. An Android with a Game Boy, that is something I have never seen before. But what can we do with it? And of course, not to forget, how good is it? Because it has also the functionality to remove this cartridge. That is a reason why I really like it. But the other thing is like, there are something of the aspect of the device itself that I don't like. And it's mainly the controls and the performance. Nowadays, we find a lot of handhelds with a very nice fancy box. And I must give this product some extra kudos for the cool box that it comes with it. So. Let's give this thing an extra point for that. So first of all, I already mentioned like this device is quite heavy, 284 grams in total. It's not super heavy, but it is quite heavy when you're looking at a device in general when it comes from China and it is not with a metal casing. But when it comes to the controls, there's where we're going to get the fist issue. And like this is a big issue. What you see is what you're going to get. And what do I mean with it? It's quite simple. So yeah, what you see is what you're going to get. We're going to get six button layout. I personally really love it, especially when you're playing some finding games. The D-pad is over here, a very good position like with the original Game Boy. And when you're looking at the unboxing uh, very quickly, you can see like there is an option for an analog stick or an option that you can buy or that there is another version. So let's start like the original one, rubbery buttons. We're going to get a tiny speaker that's quite loud. But yeah, when you're looking at everything, there is no back buttons. So the only buttons you're going to get is the ones at the front. Over here, we're going to get the contrast or Brightness control, input for 6 volt, quite an odd of a choice because 5 volt is more common. Then we're going to get a slider button for locking and unlocking the cartridge and when you're holding it, you have power on the system. Over here we're going to get a USB for using, an, let's say, an external mouse or a keyboard or a controller. And then we're going to get a very gigantic cap between the volume control that I find a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. And here at the back we can remove the cover and we're finding the battery itself. But let's talk about the cartridge itself. So the first thing that I really liked about it, that we have like a separate Game Boy cartridge, but of course this is the one that is not like freaking magic. It just contains an SD card, but let's open it up. The only thing I don't get that they are using the Triforce screwdrivers or screws itself. A little bit strange option for a product that is not real. Nintendo. The shells are identical to the fake games you can find from China, but that's not the point. The point is that we're going to get a PCB inside, a very small one, and that also contains the CF card. This time we're going to use a 32 gigabyte. Let's click it in, let's put it back together, and let's see if it boots up. So when the system has been booted up, you're going to get introduced by this menu. So take consideration, this is more like an open source Android edition. It's running on Android 7 edition, so it's quite old already. And I must say that's a little bit of a bummer. In combination with the specs, yep, it's very old. And, and also we have some limitation. With the file managers, we have the option to add some new, let's say, programs through the CF card or a USB drive. So we can side load some games or emulators if you want to. It's mainly not really necessary. It will have a built-in Wi-Fi capabilities. So you also can transfer it through the Wi-Fi if you want to. Then we're going to get a separate PPSSPP or an EPSXE. So I like different emulators you can side load, open, or less side load, open bore. And we're having here Flycast for Dreamcast. 
Then we're going to get Retro Arc, you we mess around with, and we can open Retro Pixel. And with Retro Pixel, here we're going to get the option to play some other games then. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing is that it comes with a beautiful IPS display. And the weird thing is like the display has a little bit, let's say, in space between the front glass and the display itself. So it's kind of weird when you're looking at it. And also when you're looking at the way you can control the display, brightness at the side, it works very well. And here you can see like the brightness in combination with the view angle is just excellent. A very positive thing. So the boot up will be in a couple of seconds very quickly. But when you're going to boot up, this is the menu that you're going to get. The menu looks very basic, but it just works fine. Very fast, as you can see over here. But there are some things you need to know. So this is basically an Android device. So with the file manager over here, we can sideload some new applications and games if needed. Another thing that I really like about it. But the downside is when we're looking at the software version, it's Android version is number seven. So this means it is not, let's say, capable of running every single application. And so far I know you can also not really update it to another different version. Over here, we're going to get RetroArc PP SSP emulator for the PlayStation Portable and of course the emulator for the PlayStation 1. And with RetroPixel, this is the special front end for this device. I really like this menu to be honest and I, mean, I just especially mean with the way how it looks. So it's more like a front end and it's kind of weird that it doesn't boot up instantly into the front end in my opinion because it would be like even much better. Over here we can choose the systems. Yeah, it's an Android device so we can play a lot of different games but powerful, yeah, that is this device not. So you will see it coming back to the main stuff that we've played before on many of these Chinese handhelds. When it comes to PlayStation 1 and PlayStation Portable N64, we're going to have a mixed performance. But well, I will show you. Okay, but let's talk about the controls itself. So, the button press, I do like it. Like, it has a very nice touch. The D-pad, uh, when you look at it, like, it, it feels really, really cheap. But, when playing, it does it up. But well, here comes a major problem. We can play some games like these. The Racing it will not be a problem at all. But when you want to play some different games, you're going to miss out buttons. So even if it can run all N64 games, you cannot even play them. At the moment you cannot see it, but I know noticed some major drop downs with the frame rate. So N64 is like always a mixed performance, but this game seems to be running just fine. In let's say in, in a way that you can just actually play it. Woohoo! How weird is that? I can drive through water. Okay, so next up is PlayStation Portable. I have been messing around with it with different emulators or different versions, but somehow I couldn't get it to work properly. So the thing that I don't like is, first of all, like it had got like two black bars because the expert ratio of this display is different than the original game. So let's load up a game. Even if I can manage to boot it up in the previous attempts, it didn't work at all. It just went straight to the main menu like that. So yeah, PlayStation Portable, in my opinion, is not working at all. Okay, so where this handheld comes to basically be in the position to shine is that it's going to be like with games like PlayStation 1. So here you can see like in combination with this beautiful IPS display, it has a very good performance. You can left top corner, you can see the frame rate, it doesn't even dip, maybe with a couple of them, but not a big of a deal if you ask me. I'm a big fan of the R-Type Delta series and this game runs perfectly and I can re-enjoy it like it is on the original PlayStation. So this is a really cool piece of hardware for PlayStation 1 games and again you will have the same issue because PlayStation Control has way more buttons. Normally it had like 8 buttons in total so you're still missing out 2 of them. So this device just needs at least a couple of shoulder buttons so we can map all of the buttons in combination if it's possible with an analog stick. And also the audio goes way louder with this emulator. But what I like about it, I can sideload emulators if you want to. If you want to mess around with it, it's all freaking possible.
So what I don't get with the device is that they're using these Triforce screws. How more? Why? Why are you doing that? Eh, I had a toolkit laying around, so it's not a big of a deal. But if you want to repair or you want to tink around with it, yeah, a normal screwdriver will not do the trick. Oh, yeah. Okay, so all the batteries have been removed. So it's quite interesting to see what are we going to get. So the construction wise is also very interesting. I need to be very gentle. So you need to remove at least the battery over here that we're going to do. And, all right. So we can basically safely remove it. Be careful with all the freaking ribbon cables. Because that one goes to the LCD display. And let's take a close look at it. The days are over when it comes to hot glue, craziness and a lot of soldering nightmare legacy. This is quite interesting. And nowadays we're having like uniquely produced pieces of, or let's say hardware, like the PCBs. We'll open up to see what is going on with this. Because I have no idea what this does. Then we're going to get here the main board that is controlling everything. And here we're having like the control board. This has been made in 2019 and by Funny Playing, the company that also make all of the upgrade kits for your Game Boys. Think about the LCD functionalities and of course we're having here the funny playing upgraded speaker that sounds quite nice okay so let's take a close look at this pcb and i find it quite interesting to be honest so this is like the main board itself it comes with the all winner a64 chip it's not a really interesting one to be honest like nowadays we're using way more powerful chips in let's say the device review here on the channel it also explains why it doesn't have like an extremely good performance here we're going to get the wi-fi chip if I'm saying it correctly, combination here, we're going to your Wi-Fi antenna. It's all pretty basic, but let's take a close look at this wire. I said wire, I mean the flat cable, because this is the one that connects to the CF card. It's quite interesting construction. This thing has specially been made, and there is no production date whatsoever so far I can see. Or is there something over here? No, not really. Or yeah, it says here 2009. So I must say that I do have this thing in my storage for some time now, but I find it quite interest interesting to see that this thing is already a couple of years old. I'm not going to do a further teardown, but what you're going to get is this 3D printed plastic piece that basically holds the LCD in position. And here is the ribbon cable. I can remove it, but in the end, it's just an LCD display underneath. Okay, so what I find really interesting when I'm doing this teardown is that when you're looking at the way they improved everything, I've reviewed, let's say, the first generation of Raspberry Pi handhelds, also one from Frony playing back in the day, and it was more like a messy situation, like a lot of hot glue, but they, needed, they just needed to make something out of nothing. And now you can see, like, they're evolving these products into, like, pre, let's say, kits that you can make yourself or you just slap it together it's quite interesting and i think it's a big improvement and it looks fairly nice a couple of ribbon cables pcbs slap it together with some screws some modifications over here and you're done but especially what i love about it is that it runs on android and when they like adding some better let's say chips over here and they're getting better cooling because this thing gets really hot so when you're going to do stuff like that in combination with let's say an emulator like oh boy, boy you're going to get a lot of great things that you can do with it but what do I think of the device itself? What I already mentioned a couple of times, this thing has a lot of potential. So first of all, what I like about it, this thing comes just with a basic 4000 milliamp battery inside. And if this thing gets broken or you just need a replacement in general, like you can easily like swap them out. Like here you can see the connector. If you're going to order the right one, it's like swappable. There is not a lot of room in the Game Boy left. So the 4000 will be like say the maximum milliamp you can get. Or better said that you can squeeze into the device. But when you're doing it side by side and you're looking at the competition, you can see like when it comes to the Game Boy, there is so much stuff you can do, especially when it comes to LCL Game Boys. It's more like the Nemesis and it has so much potential compared with the Android edition from Retropixel. The Game Boy Pi nowadays comes even with the Raspberry Pi 4. In other words, for people who have no idea what I'm talking about, the Pi 4 is so much stronger than the number 3, of course, but it has even the option to play PlayStation Portable and we can even run Sega Dreamcast, the stuff that doesn't run on the Retro Pixel. So basically, this says like the Game Boy Pi is way better than the Retro Pixel. 
Magic always comes with a price. <laughs> and that's always the same with technology. So the Game Boy Pi will be way expensive to buy when it comes compared with the Retro Pixel. But what you basically paying for is also what you're going to get. So what I'm hoping in the future, if the Retro Pixel will return with a better edition, uh, the display itself, there's nothing to complain over here. But the biggest difference is of course the button layout. So both of them have the six button layout and that is not, fun fact, like there is not a lot of big comparison like the, the touch of the D-pad of the Retro Pixel is slightly sturdier than the Pi edition. But yeah, the Pi, <laughs> yeah, got some shoulder buttons and even like having editions with four of them. So when it comes to, let's say, controls, man, the Pi does win it again beside the power. So if this product was released back in the day when the Raspberry Pi 3 Pi editions came out, yep, they would be like mind freaking blowing. But now, with all the competition, with the freaking handheld innovation, this is like one of the many handhelds. So what is the positive thing? Beautiful display, it has open Android, it's really cool. So how cool would it be if it has more buttons, more power, and you had like a Play Store so you can actually play some Android games. But still it's lacking buttons, so we need to have like always a mouse attached to it. And we don't have an analog stick, we don't have shoulder buttons. So there were so many things, they basically in my opinion messed up. It's a little bit of a bummer because this device, it looks cool, it plays very nice. Yeah, but this is what you're going to get. But well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit the little bell, become on the Wicked family, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm.